We're live right now, by the way. Um, <laughs> just just give us a second, guys. We just kind of roll through this. I'm on with Amir Rosick, my boy from uh, Block Geeks. He's going to be talking a lot about um, cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that good stuff that I know nothing about. So I'm going to approach this from the lens of a complete pleb and uh, introduce you guys to this world because I've had a few of you ask me about this sort of environment and uh, Amir is a man to talk to. So say what's up, Amir. What's up, guys? And uh, Richard, thanks for having me on and I'm excited to uh, talk about this. Cool. All right. Um, I think I've got to pop out the chat box so we can take questions later. So we're going to take the questions okay. at the end, guys, for those of you that are on. Um, Again, I'm a little bit of a pleb here, so let me see if I can figure out how to pop out the chat box. Questions would be, you'd have two ca two windows, one for this one and one for the YouTube live stream. Yeah, where do I get the, the uh, chat box to grab the uh, questions and stuff? Control Is that in the control room? No, no, you would actually have to open up two windows. Um, so pretend you're a viewer of this, so cl click the link somewhere, I don't know where it is, somewhere at the oh, bottom right yeah. corner. Okay. Let me go to my live here. Then. Yeah, it's it's funky. It's a funky design you have. I wonder why they did it that way. Mm, I don't know. So you just hit my channel and you take a look at the live stuff. Mm hmm. All right. Stand by there, fellas. Where the fuck is it? <laughs> As we do this live. All right, hold on. Well, if you if you're on the Google Hangout, there should be a link button bottom uh, right. Uh, yeah. Link, and you click that, and that gives you the link for the YouTube Live that people can actually watch. Oh, got it. Okay. And then you open up that in another window, and then you'll see the comments on the right hand side. Okay. I'll let you do a quick intro while I open that up. If you if you want to tell everybody who you are and uh, why you know this shit so well. Yeah, so background, serial entrepreneur, addicted to building businesses, uh, have the shiny syndrome, <laughs> syndrome, uh, ADD, uh, been in the marketing space for a very long time, and about, I don't know, two, three years, well, uh, actually, I got involved in Bitcoin a while ago, uh, knowing of it, and then about two years ago, started helping a bunch of Bitcoin blockchain companies in marketing and branding, uh, realized there's a lot of help needed in the space, I wanted to get heavily involved in the space and then teamed up with really cool people and uh, ever since been working on Block Geeks, Block Geeks Lab and uh, really building out this ecosystem. Cool. Alright, I think I've got it. Mm. Alright, um, live chat. Yeah, we got this going. Can you guys just hear me okay? Can you let me know that it's um, working? Just write something in the chat box like where you're at right now in the world. Got live chat showing, but a uh, bunch of people viewing. Where the hell is the discussion going? Are you on your actual YouTube channel? Yeah, 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 I got it. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I can hear you. Thanks. Okay, thanks, guys. Awesome. All right, so let's begin. Um, I'm going to start by saying um, I was wrong about uh, blockchain. Well, I was, I was wrong about Bitcoin for sure. About a year ago, I did a video after I think uh, Amir and I got together for lunch or something like that. And we were shooting the shit about um, cryptocurrency. And you were telling me that you were going all in on um, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, uh, blockchain. And you kind of gave me your reasons for it. And I said to you something along the lines of, I don't think it's got a lot of staying power. Um, I don't know. What did I say? Something to do with... I, I didn't believe that a cryptocurrency would last simply because the banks can't print it or control it and neither can the government. And you kind of laughed and you're like, okay, well, we'll see what happens. So um, what was Bitcoin at about a year ago? I think when you and I spoke about, about it, I think it was like 700. Okay. And what are we at now? Like two or three grand? I don't know. I, I lose track. 2300, give or take. Yeah, so I just I'll bought a coin market cap right now. Yeah, so I just bought an Audi R8 V10. Had I invested in Bitcoin, I would have probably had a McLaren P1 today. So that's that's like 20, it's it's twenty seven hundred as at this second. Yeah. Okay. So like that's the significance of the growth of this market. So it's worth talking about. You know, my channel is about becoming a better version of yourself and learning about opportunities and stuff like this. So I wanted to kind of go down this path with Amir and. Um, Again, approach it from the lens of a complete idiot because obviously um, I didn't get that right. So why is um, cryptocurrency – actually, let's stop on cryptocurrency for a sec. Why is the blockchain so important right now? There's a couple of reasons. One, we have to first evaluate 
the current landscape of the problem. So there's a reason why Bitcoin worked and it is actually, working currently. Actually, actually, hold on a sec. I'm just going to stop you for a second. Yeah. I just want to frame where you are just so people know where you're at because you're in a new incubator studio and it kind of looks like you're in a furnace yeah. room right now in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, let me. Yeah, so we have no rooms yet. So I made a makeshift room with whiteboards. Cool. Uh, yeah, so this is your new incubator space. studio for startups right now in Kensington Market, yeah. right? That's right. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, I was talking about the landscape. So you have to understand why Bitcoin worked and why it's working today. So it came out 2008 around the crash where we had the real estate crash. At that time, uh, free money was giving out. Literally banks were giving people money that had no jobs at all. Like here's $200,000 to buy a house. Yeah, no, it's pay us back later. So we had this big financial crash. A lot of people lost their homes. A lot of people lost their pension plans. A lot of people were on the streets. Uh, a lot of people lost all their uh, retirement savings. And so this white paper comes around by this unknown source. So we don't know who created Bitcoin. This is Satoshi Nakamoto. People say it's one person. Some people say it's a group. Some people say it's a, a combination of different other people. Who knows? Anyways, this uh, unidentified individual, Satoshi Nakamoto, creates his white paper, releases it uh, on cypherpunk uh, platforms online. Uh, other people get involved and really people really start getting interested in this Bitcoin blockchain technology. And over time, uh, more and more people realize that necessary necessity of this technology and I'll explain why this technology is fundamentally amazing because blockchain itself is not a new technology what blockchain is is a stack of old technologies put together in a certain way that they function together to create this cryptocurrency so people think it was just a brand new way of doing things yes and no it's a brand new way of rearranging different things to work together you know you have cryptography of decentralized networks uh, you have incentives with, with, uh, with cryptocurrency uh, you have smart contracts like these are all implemented as individual aspects of, of itself before blockchain technology and so Satoshi put it all together so why blockchain is important is this a couple of things I'm try to make this as simple as possible One's it. There's no central bank behind it. There's no CEO. There's no. There's nobody that says, uh, "I have legal equity uh, control and entity of this uh, of this company." Because it's not a company. It is a decentralized technology that nobody owns, that nobody controls, that is spread across the world, that anybody can join at any single time and do whatever they like. Uh, number two, the economics behind it is. You know, if, if we're comparing this to, say, how the fiat system is with uh, Keynesian economics. So with their, with their financial system is hyperinflation, quantitative easing. For example, 2008, when we had the financial crash, what was the solution? Bailouts. Like people, people who were stealing billions of dollars and they got in trouble, you know, what got, you know what happened with them? The government gave them billions of dollars. And for them to make sure that the 2008 crash wasn't a real crash, they artificially started printing money. Quantitative easing, interest rates dropped. And then we are in a big shit show right now. Uh, so with Bitcoin, it's not like that. It, it, it's a solid cap. You have 21 million Bitcoins that will be eventually mined. So it, Bitcoin is the opposite of uh, Keynesian economics. It's Austrian economics. So pretty much as Bitcoin ages and as Bitcoin gets older, as supply decreases and demand increases, Bitcoin value goes up. And what's great about this is, as I mentioned earlier, since nobody owns it, nobody controls it, people can't manipulate what happens within Bitcoin. Well, that's not true to to extend. There are some small, small things which we won't get into. Uh, but imagine you and I can buy this digital, I guess I say internet money, as uh, Andreas Antonopoulos calls it. So we have this internet money where you and I can access it anywhere in the world. We don't need. Uh, we don't need. Uh, we don't need clearance we don't need permission from them to access it we don't need no special KYC AML po uh, policy all we need is an internet connection and we can access it we can transfer it anywhere around the world whenever we want uh, and what's great about this is we can actually now communicate and this is what the powerful essence of blockchain is and, and it goes back to what money is money is communication people really need to understand that all the money is is communication so Richard just bought uh, the Audi how did he buy it? By communication. He communicated that he's getting X amount of value to get this X amount of value. And that's what money is, is a form of communication. So for me, if I want to communicate with somebody anywhere around the world, there's no entity, there's no mailman stopping me for saying, hey, Richard Amir, you can't do business in Nairobi because we have uh, fiscal policies that doesn't, that, that doesn't allow you to do business. Well, fuck that money directly to Nairobi with anybody that I want to do business instantaneously and they can get it on their phone so 
This is why we call blockchain the middleman killer. It eliminates any middleman authority, systems, structures, organizations, or anybody telling you yes or no, you can do this transaction. It connects two people or two entities or two parties as a peer-to-peer -peer organization, not controlled by anybody in a decentralized network. Let me ask you a question. So my understanding of uh, currency of money is that it's stored value. And you just finished saying that um, the blockchain type currency like cryptocurrency is communication plus value. Is that right? Yes. So another thing with blockchain, like if we look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is different than Ethereum. If I look at Ethereum versus Litecoin, that's different. If I look at Litecoin versus Monero, like there's roughly okay. 800 different Okay, let me just stop it for a sec because yeah. I'm doing this from like a basic bitch angle because that's what I am right now because I don't understand <laughs> this stuff very well. So yeah. um, money is money is nothing more than stored value, and that's like an age old premise because uh, you know my name's you know my last name's Cooper. So many many moons ago in medieval times, my family would be making barrels. You know, Coopers were barrel makers, and let's say that there was you know row six in the town that I lived in, and you guys I don't know what row six is. Let's say you farm chickens. Sure. Um, and I needed, you know, chickens and 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 chicken eggs and maybe feathers for for uh, pillows. And you needed a, a barrel to, you know, make your own wine. Well, there'd be times of the years where you couldn't get eggs from the chickens, or um, you know, you weren't able to uh, harvest meat for them because they might have been doing something else. And you still wanted a barrel, but I couldn't give you the barrel because you couldn't give me chicken in exchange. Yep. So they created currency in the form of money, which was usually in coins, which was metal, gold, silver, that sort of thing. Yes. And they had a certain amount of value that were assigned to it. And you could come to me when you didn't have chickens to swap for a barrel and give me a, a piece of gold in a form of a coin and say, I'd like three barrels and I'd give them to you sort of thing. So mm -hmm. that's how that's how money's been you know, created in the past is it's nothing more than stored value. And I've said this before, people say that money's the root of all evil, but that's a lot of bullshit because all that money demonstrates is that you've created a lot of value in people's lives, which is why well, you people have People who say that don't understand it, that's why. And they also don't have it too. But so, so this, <laughs> so this, so this new cryptocurrency that we're talking about is, um, is also allowing communication. Are you talking in the sense about like smart contract? Or like, like, is that what you're getting into? No, think about this for a second. So right now, if you and I want to do business anywhere around the world, we are kind of forced to accept certain currencies by their rules. So whether it's like the USD, like for example, let's say we do want to do some import. Like I used to be in a textile business in Asia. The only, all they take is USD, that's it. They won't, you know, even if you're European, they won't take the year, all they want is USD. So I'm forced, I'm forced to use USD. So what does that mean for me as a business owner? That means I gotta convert my Canadian into USD and then I lose already. Then I gotta use USD nonstop, as opposed to imagine we switch this to cryptocurrencies. I'm doing business in China right now and I wanna import, I don't know, some from, from a company, we'll call, I wanna import more mouses. I can choose now, this is my communication, I can choose any cryptocurrency I want and I can send it to them. And what's great about cryptocurrency is they can accept that cryptocurrency and they can now transfer that cryptocurrency into any other cryptocurrency they want. So it's my democratic vote of what I want to choose to use and what they want to choose to use. There's no gun to your head or his head over there in China telling them you have to use this currency for business. Okay, so there's an assigned value to each type of currency that's out there. But Correct. how is the currency used as a form of communication as well? And guys, by the way, I see a lot of questions coming up here on this other chat bubble. Just hold off your questions till the end. We'll probably leave at least 30 minutes for a QA and a at the end. So just hold yeah. off on that for the time being. But yeah, so yeah, that's, how, how is this currency used as a form of communication? Like I'm still confused. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. For example, we'll talk about Ethereum since, since it's been in the news a lot. So right now, Ethereum runs on the same protocol as uh, Bitcoin, proof of work. So how proof of work works, and I'll try to explain this as easy as possible, is you have these gigantic warehouses full of gaming graphics for the sake of the conversation, for the sake of the conversation called ASIC boots, like a specific cards designed for uh, mining. And all they do literally is guesswork a certain number to confirm that this is an authentic blockchain transaction on the Bitcoin, okay? That's how, that's how it works. Uh, that's how Ethereum is right now. But they're planning to eliminate that and go through or, or go to a new model called proof of stake where they eliminate these graphic cards so they don't do guesswork anymore and it's on virtually online. And this is where how you vote or this is how communication comes in. Say Richard has 10,000 Ethereum, Amir has 10,000 Ethereum. You and I can stake our Ethereum online, part of this node. Like let's say like a voting 
we'll call it a voting booth online. We stake our money online and with our stake of money, we communicate that we're voting for certain proposals in this network. So this gives you the ability when you have cryptocurrencies in certain blockchains to actually vote for certain proposals or uh, mine to uh, create the network, uh, to actually uh, support the network and to make the network run faster. So like right now, it's almost, it's almost akin to saying, you know, under the table of politicians where certain corporations will pay politicians fiat money and the politicians will give them favors for certain laws, right? So that's how it works for online as well. Like we would actually stake our cryptocurrency for voting rights based on certain proposals that we want to implement. Okay, got it. Smart, con smart contracts will work similarly depending on what you're using it for. Okay. Um, I want to ask you this, this question about government and um, banking because they really can't control yes. or I mean, unless they want to buy cryptocurrency or they yes. want to use smart contracts to execute agreements between two parties. I know that the Canadian banking system is definitely looking at smart contracts. Um, you know, they're looking to lower the headcount of their law group and stuff like that. So yep. um, it makes sense for them to execute like a auto loan, for example, on a smart co contract through the blockchain network. So they can get involved that way. But as far as the monetary value of it, so what does that mean for government and banks in the future? You know, because they can't control it, they can't print it, they can't set rates on it. It's, you know, it's an open platform. Like, what does that mean for them? Like, isn't that a big threat for them? Yes and no. I think also it's going to force them to realize that their legacy systems are bullshit and, and it needs to update and actually care about us, the citizens, and us as clients of the fiat currency system. Like. It kind of irritates me that you and I as entrepreneurs, if we want to start a business, that we have to actually pay for a business account at a bank to use our own money so they can profit from it. That's absurd. You are money so you can loan it out and make more money, and yet we still have to pay for transactions, and yet we still have to pay to even have this fucking bank account. You must be fucking shitting me. As opposed to right now, I can just literally go on my phone, uh, I can go on an exchange or peer to peer. I can buy Litecoin right now and I can have a $50,000 of Litecoin on my phone. And my phone is more secure, depending on how you have your security, but my phone is more secure than the, my, my own bank account. And I can transfer that money when I want, how I want it, with who I want. So this okay. is creating secondary markets. This is creating competition. And obviously we know in nature with competition, it's, it's the ones who are most adoptable, uh, adaptable to survive. And I don't think so you're going to see too much threats in North America because, well, not, not just North America, let's say Canada because we have much more uh, strict and more, say, stable banking than the United States. Is Like for us, we, you and I don't benefit as much as, say, people in China, as much as people in Russia, as much as people in India, as much as people in Africa. And that's why you see a huge demand in India, a huge demand in, in China because they actually benefit it from using cryptocurrency because their banking system is corrupt, their governments are corrupt, and they don't trust them. So they're trying to figure out how, how can they communicate with people around the world through commerce and how they can move money without the government interfering and taking away from them. Okay, let me let me pose this question because I'm gonna be the devil's advocate here. So the government and the, and the banking system, they can't control cryptocurrency. They can't print it, they can't set rates. Not everything, it depends. Like, like it, let's talk about Bitcoin because everybody knows it. Currently, okay. They can't control it. No, it's not. It's not a center point of technology. We're like, oh, that building over there has the servers. Let's go shut it down. Or oh, the rich is a, Richard is a CEO. Let's go sue him or put him in jail for for owning Bitcoin. That's not how it works. There's nobody to sue. There's no nothing to shut down. It's a decentral. It's like torrent. So it's kind of like it, but it's not like it. But if you understand how BitTorrent works, where it's like multiple files everywhere on the internet and then you download the files all at once and it's coming in bit by bit from all different types of nodes and, and resources. That's the same thing. Well, kind of like the same thing how blockchain works. Okay. So again, you know, being the devil's advocate, why like, like this is a huge threat for the banking system for government when it, when it comes to controlling money, because money, you know, like aside from sex, money is probably the most important thing in the world to people and you know, to businesses, it's the lifeblood yes. of what they do. Um, who was it Oscar Wilde that said that, you know, like everything in the world is about sex, except for sex, sex is about power. Well, yeah. money is like right at, you know, right at the top of the chart there. So what's, what's going to stop a, a government, a, a banking institution, a hacker from taking down the entire cryptocurrency network and wiping out the entire value that was created? I mean, like we saw the hack with, 
uh, Mount Gox. You know, I've seen posts on some of the like I follow a lot of people on Facebook that are heavily involved in in cryptocurrency. I'm not going to mention their yes. names, but they've had instances in their life where they've publicly mentioned that they've had money lost during transfers with like wallets yes. and stacks and things like that. Right. So, what's so currently. Bitcoin's worth the market caps around 45 billion dollars Bitcoin is under attack every single day at every single second for the past eight years Bitcoin network itself has never been hacked ever when you mention Mt. Gox Mt. Gox was just a regular website originally made for magic the gathering cards That's why it's called Mt. Gox where people gave their bitcoins on the exchange the exchange itself got hacked and the Bitcoin got lost so that's a center point of failure where you have one source or this one entity such as an exchange is holding millions of dollars It's no different than like you and I holding million dollars in our house and our house gets robbed and gets stolen mm -hmm. Or sorry, you know the, the, the money gets stolen in the house. So that's what's happening. Bitcoin's never been hacked It's get it tries to get hacked every single day. Ethereum's, Ethereum's never been hacked. It tries to get hacked every single day so when you say well, but, when these isn't, but isn't anything that's electronic hackable? Like anything that's online, like in space of like the internet or the blockchain, can't can't you hack it and steal it? Like there's got to be a way for somebody to figure that out. The difference though is we are, you're focusing more on technology that has a center point of failing. So for example, like, like Amazon. Mount, right, like Amazon, like Mount, like the Mount Gox model where the entire thing was like hacked and clean. So like, okay, who are you hacking in Bitcoin when there's like 10,000 Twenty thousand nodes, different computers running the same software, all have the same copy of everything. Mm -hmm. Who are you hacking? And what are you hacking? I don't know. Ten thousand of them at the same time? Like, isn't that possible? Anything's possible. Fifty-one percent right? attack. You know, theoretically, no. It's it cost. It's too much. It's too cost. It's it costs too much. And if it ever happened for a split second, the network would know and just recalibrate. So the network's intelligent enough that it's got security protocol in place that it would recalibrate. It had, you know how intelligent it is. For the last eight years, every the. the the, mo the world's smartest, I mean, you name it, the top hackers of the world, the top think tank people, the top CIA guy, whoever, you name it, they've been trying. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm still so skeptical of the whole electronic currency thing. It, 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 it frightens me from the sense of my experience being in business, being an entrepreneur, um, you know, for the last whatever it is, 14, 15 years, and seeing how uh, business leaders behave, how the banking system behaves, how government be I mean, I, I got heavily involved in uh, lobbying a certain bill in parliament for about a good year and a half, and I saw how they behaved when they lost control. And, you know, like I still ask myself and I wonder, like what happens when people recognize that cryptocurrency removes them from the clutches of the bank's profit margins? And more and more people gravitate to that. Well, the um, banks are going to create their own. For example, you mentioned Canada. They've been doing it for the last two years, trying to create a Canadian cryptocurrency. Uh, Russia is doing it now. Singapore announced they want to make, create a cryptocurrency bank. So their solution to the problem eventually is create their own private blockchain that they control that's not public, like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Monero. And uh, they're going to create their own sovereign cryptocurrency that they manipulate and control. That's that's exactly where the future is heading towards. It'll be the fiat version the government and the central banks own. So it'll be like a hybrid version of what cryptocurrency is currently with like Bitcoin, Ethereum versus like a Canadian yeah. dollar. Well, kind of the genie's at the bottle. Pandora's box has been open. Regardless of what they try to do, now is this gives us optionality for the first time ever in human existence doesn't matter where you live doesn't matter your religion doesn't matter uh, your faith it doesn't matter your creed if you have the internet connection you as Milton Friedman talks about you have the right to choose what you want to use as a utility of communication around the world so over 800 different tokens out there that have value on exchanges that people and soon these exchanges are going to actually um, evolve into decentralized exchanges so that's going to be amazing where same thing like blockchain, but this is decentralized where there's not one center point of failure, but everybody's exchanging with each other on this peer-to-peer -peer network that's built on Tor. So that's going to be an anonymous as well. Like it's beautiful things people are creating out there. Uh, so I can choose over 800 different tokens in crypto. I'm going to choose one, you know, one called the Richard coin right now. And if only 10 people accept it, so what? 10 people accept it, they see value in it. And that's a beautiful thing about, about this now. This gives people 
options and options equal success for people the issue right now with currencies is like you have no options it's like i live in china and i want to do business in china i gotta do the renminbi i live in canada and i want to do business somewhere else i gotta use the fucking the u.s currency and us canadian our poor us poor canadians we get screwed by 20 percent every time we've got to convert a one canadian dollar to united states dollar do that why do i have to fall victim to that and pay all these outrageous conversion fees and all these banking fees when i can just have an online account and cryptocurrency and for example right now i do it i pay all my freelancers for a majority of my businesses in cryptocurrency i don't go through the banking got it okay let me ask you this about ethereum it's 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 blown up like um you know you and i have a mutual friend and his son actually you know created uh ethereum um yeah. it's 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 clawing its way up on bitcoin as far as market capitalization why has it grown so quickly? Like, like what's so great about Ethereum? Ethereum it has taken the idea that Nick Zabos did, and that's a great podcast to listen to, the last Tim Ferriss podcast with Tim Ferriss and Nick Zabos. And Nick Zabos was talking about smart contracts. So Vitalik, uh, who was the, co the creator of Ethereum, he created a system where he took Nick Zabos' original idea and expanded on that. Uh, so how a smart contract is, in a nutshell is if you guys are familiar with if this then that logic like for example the company IFTTT so imagine like a vending machine where Richard goes to a vending machine uh, puts in a loony and then press F6 and then like the skittles fall out imagine that online where if Richard wants to sell his Audi in the future that Audi is put on the blockchain with the deed so the title of the car that we know is a true ownership that Richard owns it we also know that there's no liens against it or collateral owned on the car and then somebody wants to come around and buy it and if I'm on a website and I say oh this car is for sale for two hundred thousand dollars I say buy instantaneously you know in cryptocurrency it can go through an escrow and a smart contract in real time on that escrow and a smart contract it can double check the ownership of the car it can double Double check uh, any liens against the car. It, it does all the paperwork they do online, and if everything passes, then the swap happens on a smart contract. The owner, uh, the seller of the car, gets a cryptocurrency, and now the buyer of the car gets ownership on his blockchain, and that that transaction has been facilitated in real time. So, is it only on the Ethereum network that you can use smart contracts? No, no there's other there, there are other ones coming out there, but with Ethereum, they're they're big thing right now in the future coming out is scalability. So the issue with blockchains right now is the scalability. Uh, you can't build million million people users on, for example, Ethereum right now. The technology is still very naive. It's very new. We need a couple of years to still build out the protocol layers. Uh, and Ethereum's working on that. Bitcoin's going through their big growth right now in August, and they still need a couple of years to work that out. So we're still in the super, super early phases of this industry uh, akin to creating the protocol layers for the internet. Like we need a couple more years to figure out how can we actually mature this technology so it can handle billions of users using it on a global scale. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's all the questions that I can think of right now. Um, you mentioned a lot recently on your Facebook feed about risk and you know, you could lose it all. It's, yes. You know, it's almost like you're saying, hey, you know, it's been great, but only invest what you can afford to lose. I, I'll tell you why. Um, for, yeah, I'll tell you why. For example, a lot of people keep money on exchanges, and I'm the first one to say it. the probabilities of some of these exchanges getting hacked in the future is not if it's going to get hacked, it's, gonna, it, it's when it's going to get hacked. Uh, and so people, I always recommend when you buy cryptocurrency, never, ever keep it on exchange. I use a small uh, wallet device called a, a Ledger Nano S. It's like a hundred bucks worth every penny. It's offline, it's not online. It's a little keychain thing. It has amazing backup system as well. And so, for example, let's say um, tomorrow something happens with some of the DApps even. So these startups that built on top of Ethereum, you know, for example, the other day one just raised two hundred twenty million dollars in three hours. Uh, two weeks before, another one raised one hundred fifty million dollars. So these are startups that have untested code, raise a lot of money. Uh, they have a lot of like, uh, let's say, red paint painted on them where potential, I don't want to say hackers, but potential nefarious characters obviously are trying to benefit from that big purse. Uh, so if we're looking at these certain dApps or startups built on Ethereum, uh, and if we're looking at certain exchanges, I won't name names, the probabilities of either or having a hack or either or having faulty code that causes an issue for a backdoor entry is high. And so if that happens, then you see market crashing. You'll see then all of a sudden the faith in the coin gone, uh, and then people will start second guessing, oh, should I keep it? Should I sell it? Automatic response to that is I need to sell because the price is declining.
Mm. And this is what happened with my own Gox. This is what happened with uh, Shapeshift back in the day. This is what happened this is numerous times. Like it's a repeating pattern. Uh, but let emotions get in the way because if you let emotions get in the way, for example, people who back. I think it's 2013, 2014 when Bitcoin was at twelve hundred dollars back at that time. Next thing you know, Bitcoin's around like thirteen bucks. So you go from <laughs> twelve hundred to thirteen bucks. What would you do? Most people sold, but there's very few that stayed on. And right now, currently, it's twenty seven hundred dollars. So a lot of people let emotions get in the way. Obviously, emotion to buy, emotion to sell. We call it phenomics. Fear of missing out economics. Uh, so just remember, when you buy it, it is high risk. We're still testing this technology. There is a high probability that certain exchanges of, of center point of failure could get hacked or these dApps. And if you do buy it, be, buy it for the long run. Be part of a great process. You're part of history right now. You know, we're going to look back and be like, these were interesting years. So buy it, take it offline, keep it on like a hard wallet, and just sit back and relax. Cool. So let me ask you a question. What about credit? Is there the concept of credit that exists on the cryptocurrency world or, yeah, is, it, there's, or is it working in like hard currency? There's platforms to loan out crypto, yeah. So so there's like crypto loans? Yeah. So as a guy like me that's, you know, obviously in the credit and collection uh, business, what, what, what should I be looking at when it comes to stuff like that? Like this is more of a selfish question. <laughs> um, there's, there's pros and cons of this. The con is you have to keep your money on exchange. That's the con. But if you're willing to lose it, then there's a pro because a pro is you're lending out money to margin, uh, people who are doing margin trading and people who are using it for just basic trading. So for example, you go one of the, one of the exchanges like Poloniex or Bittrex, those are two of them. You can actually loan out your crypto so people can utilize it for their own margin trading. And uh, depending on what your loan rate is, you can, you, do, you can determine that. But yeah, that's one way you can do it where instead of your crypto just sitting and appreciating based on speculatory value or utility value, you can also get now, um, you can get a return just loaning it out to other people that want to use it. Okay. Um, are we in a bubble right now? You know, if we're looking at history and if we're looking at the dot-com um, boom and bust, the dot-com boom and bust first had an ejection of over in dollars, give or take, they say. So $200 billion of initial capital was put in in the 1990s in Silicon Valley that equaled out to $1.2 trillion in speculatory value. After the bust, 80% of that disappeared. Now, if we're looking at currently in Bitcoin, just based on initial investment, we have a long way to go. However, the dynamics are much different because, for example, let's say one of these big exchanges gets hacked tomorrow, the bubble's starting. It's panic mode because if all of a sudden $200 million of all these different cryptos get stolen, obviously the price is going to drop down. So do I think we're in a bubble right now? I, I think... I, you know, it's hard to tell, but I think we are in a big phenomic phase where a lot of people are trying to get rich really quick. I believe that 95%, I would say even more, 98% of all these startups being built on blockchains are garbage. They complete garbage. Uh, and Which it's going to be garbage. I don't know if I want to name names, but I'll Which name the ones. ones are the ones that, that you prefer then? I'm very bullish on Ethereum. I'm very bullish on uh, Bitcoin. I'm very bullish on Monero. I like Litecoin. Uh, I like what Vinny's doing with Civic. Um, what other ones I like on top of my mind? Those are ones I like currently that I'm actually focusing and studying more and more. Mm, okay. Um, all right. We've 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 gone for about half an hour, so I'm going to switch over to the uh, comment section and take some questions. So I know you guys have been chatting to yourselves. I don't know what's been going on here, but uh, now's the time if you got a question, I'll throw it over to Amir. Can you see the chat bubble, by the way? No. Okay, I'll just read it off to you. So guys, if you have a question, just uh, chuck it in there and I'll ask them for you. I'm just gonna scroll up a bit to see if there's anything that's recent that I can throw your way. By the way, just quickly while they're throwing their questions there, why don't you tell them where they can find you and Block Geeks? Yeah, so best way is B-L-O-C-K, geeks.com, blockgeeks.com. And that's that's a platform where people can exchange ideas and learn more about um, these sorts of opportunities? Yeah. Plus, we, tra we train devs. So if you are a JavaScript developer or whatever developer, any like back-end, front-end, full-stack dev, if you want to learn about blockchain, Solidity, Ethereum, even Bitcoin, um, come on in. We train you. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so I got a question here. Do you think Ethereum is the financial system answer to compete and destroy Bitcoin? And then the follow-up to that is no, why? no, okay, no. <laughs> and why not? 
the two different things is like me trying to compare a banana versus an orange. Like Ethereum is more of a utility platform really designed for companies and enterprises to build on top of it. Think about like, you know, Linux or think of like Microsoft, think of like legacy software that companies build on top of that platform. That's kind of what Ethereum is currently as of today. Truth be told, when I view Bitcoin, Bitcoin in my eyes is digital gold, is a store of value. I don't want, you know, I don't view it for micro transactions or micro payments. I don't view it as sending money constantly around the world. Like as of today, for me to send five bucks to Richard, it cost me three dollars in transaction fees in Bitcoin. So it, it's not, it makes no financial sense for me to send Richard five bucks when it cost me three dollars to send it. But I view it as gold when I can put in money. You know, even if I buy it right now, and I think it's very undervalued. Uh, you, you know, remember this conversation right now? Bitcoin's at twenty seven hundred US. Mark my words, you'll see Bitcoin soon at $10,000. Well, I remember a time when I first started looking at it. I think I was talking to, um, I don't know if it was you or our other, um, what's your buddy's name out in London? He was just at your office the other day. Brad. Brad, yeah. Brad and I were talking about it. He's like, it was like 120 bucks at the time. Um, yep. So his follow up question on the Ethereum was, uh, or why are big corporations migrating towards Ethereum? I think you answered that already because it's more of a platform for exchange with smart contracts, right? Yes. Um, what is the future of the blockchain? More blockchains? <laughs> it's Think about it. This, for us to grow this ecosystem, we need more developers, and that's why BlockEaks exists, uh, and also BlockEaks Lab to create more startups. And we need more entrepreneurs to get interested and bring their creative ideas in there. Uh, so the future of blockchain is like any technology. It's going to evolve, it's going to mutate, it's going to change, it's going to look a little bit different in the next four or five years. Uh, so more experimentations, and the future is going to look like uh, the word blockchain probably won't be used. It's like, we look at the internet, we don't talk about TCIP, we don't talk about the protocol of the internet. The internet's the internet, we just use it. Okay. Uh, got a question here from somebody, uh, Captain Kennedy goes, how is the new US regulation going to affect Crypto's Portium? I don't know, what, I don't even know what Chris, Crypto's Portium is. Oh, the new one talking about they want to actually view what you're bringing over the border, it's all bullshit. Like how, what do they know what I have? Nothing. So, so th that raises the question then, what's stopping them from creating legislation that's going to allow them to peer and know what you have? Because we know the government likes to know, right? How are they going to appear? What do I have? All right, you're the government, Richard. All right, Mir, tell me what you have. I have nothing. Prove it. Uh, prove, no, sorry, prove to me that I that I actually have something when I told you I have nothing. And the only way they could do that really is if they could subpoena the blockchain subpoena what? to provide that information, which they can't. Subpo subpoena who? The, subpoena the technology itself. Mr. Technology, please give us the private keys. Got it, okay. Um, question here, how can cryptocurrency get you in trouble with the law? If you buy crack cocaine online. Okay. Is that is that really the only way, like for them to uh it depends on what country you're in. For example, in uh Colombia, it's illegal to have Bitcoin. So, but the question is like okay, if it's illegal, how do you know if I have it? And especially depending on how you buy, like for example, there's a website called Local Bitcoins where I can meet people in person and pay by cash. So let's say I meet Richard and Richard wants to buy Bitcoin for me, and Richard gives me $5,000, I give Richard uh, $5,000 with the Bitcoin, and we put it, it's not, fuck, I wish I had it here, but, you know, it's like a small USB stick, so, and, and I help Richard, I, I put this, I put the Bitcoin on a small USB stick, uh, and that small USB stick has also something called a seed phrase, or a mnemonic, it's a 24 word seed phrase, and if Richard remembers that seed phrase, he can get his Bitcoin anywhere in the world, regardless of this device. You can throw that device away. So, okay, and then Columbia asks, it says it's legal. Wait, wait, you're gonna, like, that's the thing about this. Like, what do you, the, th the things they don't understand, and we've been trying to speak with uh, you know, some, some regulator, uh, regulators as well, is uh, what are you trying to actually regulate? Like, what are you regulating? You, you can't regulate the Bitcoin blockchain. You can't regulate what, when I buy and what I buy and what I trade and my, my private keys. Got it. The, the, this, is, this is the interesting world. This is the interesting aspect a lot of people have to understand. This isn't like the banking system where, you know, think about that for a moment where I can actually remember 24 words in my head, million dollars across the border and nobody knows. Okay, uh, got a question here. Please talk about the multi-level marketing scams uh, that yeah, are taking people's money away all using scams. crypto names. It's everywhere now. All scams. Anything that smells, walks, ducks, or fucks like MLM or whatever it's called, get the fuck away. Like, there's so many out there, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I've seen a couple now on like even YouTube pre-roll ads too. 
anything, anything, anything that promises you, this is beyond MLM, anything that promises you double whatever X, run. So if it's too good to be true, ditch it. Um, yeah. Okay, so this isn't a question, it's more of a statement. This person goes, Ethereum is going to implode. He needs to be updated on it. How would you respond to that? Yeah, Ethereum could crash. I even call that. Like if you know, if one of these big dApps get hacked, the price will crash. When proof of stake starts getting launched, if they launch around Christmas or next year, and if there's some issues and there's a hard fork, yeah, it will crash. That's a part of uh, that's a cycle. Uh, so it may implode, it may not implode, but uh, you know, I'm not bullish on it. I'm very long on it. So if it does implode, it's going to rebuild. There's a there's a statement here made in the comments about the mafia and and, and crime. Like, is is cryptocurrency being used to launder money? <laughs> the biggest the biggest uh, the biggest people is the USD currency when it comes to money laundering. But yeah, they're money yeah, laundering. Yeah, yeah, Right, like for example, look at that big case in Hong Kong, which uh, with uh, HSBC, they got caught laundering something like a hundred billion dollars worth of money, and what they got fucking slap on the wrist. Uh, best offline wallet, Ledger Nano S. Um, how and where can you buy Bitcoin? What's your recommendation there? Ah, uh, that's the big bane and pain point of the crypto world. So if you want something quick and easy, um. Uh, Localbitcoins.com is good, so you can actually meet people, give cash, or 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 e-transfer, PayPal, whatever, whatever they want. Um, if you want exchange to get access to more currencies, you can use Kraken.com. The problem is the KYC and the AML policy, so know your customer policy. So in Kraken, you got to send in your driver's license, you got to send in your uh, or 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 passport. And then you got to send in your utility bill to prove where you live, and then it takes about a month to get approved. So that is the downside. But like I said earlier, there's people working on decentralized exchanges, make it more democratic, and have more options for people to get cryptocurrencies much easier from a person-to-person -person level. Okay, I've seen a lot of people talking about Litecoin. Um, uh -huh. You know, what are your thoughts on Litecoin? I think you mentioned it earlier about 10, 15 minutes ago. Litecoin is, uh, you know, that's about, uh, Char Charlie Charlie Lee. He just left Coinbase to work on it full time. It's a direct clone of uh, Bitcoin. It has Segwit in there, and it's 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 the best front runner right now for micropayments. So yeah. using it on like blogs or sending like a you know twenty five cents or even like you know one satoshi, which is much less than a penny. So I think. I'm very, I'm very bullish on it. I got a, um, a private message from one of my subscribers on my Facebook page about um, something called STEM, a social network called STEM or Steam. Steam. Yeah. Steam. It's What's just, that about? It's kind of like Reddit where people get paid, but the problem with Steam is their inflationary algorithm is not good because they keep on putting up inflation to uh, to make sure the price is on par, which that's going to break, it's going to burst. And second of all, uh, I think the idea is great, though. I think they're just way too early in the space, kind of like the MySpace of the space. And uh, the quality of writing on there and the quality of questions and answers is not that great. So, like, for example, you and I can go on Reddit on some of these forums, and people literally write books for free on Reddit. Like, you think, you look at some of these answers on Reddit, I'm like, people have a lot of free time on their hands. Uh, so, Steemit is some, similar like that, but for, for long term crypto, I'm very bearish on it. I don't think so. It has long, long-term uh, longevity. What do you think about uh, Coinbase? You know, people poo-poo on it a lot, but I don't. You know, they've brought more people in the crypto world than all the exchanges combined. All of them combined. Yeah, they have issues. I think you know they, they have issues, and you know, but I look beyond that. I look the fact that if. If, if that's a person's first introduction in the world, that's great. It's easy to get online. Yeah, they do have some issues, uh, but once people get online and get some crypto, they can jump onto other things. They go down the rabbit hole. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Coinbase. Okay. I got somebody that, that wants to push me more on the crime financing question. He says, uh, ask about how you stop crime financing with cryptocurrency. You don't stop. You make crime, you make everything legal. That's how you stop crime. War on drugs, make everything legal. There should be there should be no rule law stating I can't sell whatever I want to sell. Make everything regulated, make everything safe, and let the criminals pay taxes. Like you and I pay fucking taxes for our business. Hmm. Um, here's a question. How do you get started in mining your own Bitcoin, or is it even worth trying? I mean, uh, Not worth trying. Forget about it. Forget about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say like it. I mean, it, it barely made sense like three years ago when I first looked at it. There's there's uh, there's other blockchains you can get into. Um, I won't name names, but uh, you know, so there's one that's like Ethereum but much different. But there's one called Waves. I think they run like five bucks right now. Uh, so you can actually put something up, kind of like a node where you put a waves bond up there so maybe you put like ten thousand dollars worth of waves and they pay you like micro dividends for hosting that node and supporting the network so let's just talk about mining for a sec because that was because that was kind of how i got introduced to the concept of bitcoin two or three yeah. years ago was you know you mine these coins and then you get compensated for solving these uh mathematical equations and i remember downloading this software on my laptop at the time and i was watching it it's like I don't know. Three days went went by, and I got like point, you know, one of a Bitcoin or so. I was like, "Fuck this!" and I just deleted it. But yeah. um, like, how are people mining Bitcoins? Because you said there's 21 million Bitcoins. They haven't mined them all. Like, who's mining them now? All of China. <laughs> they have like ridiculous <laughs> warehouses. Okay, so this is this is a syndicate in Bitcoin. Um, you have this one major factory that creates ASICs these very specific cards for mining Bitcoin or, or SHA-256, the algorithm Bitcoin runs on. So very specific for SHA-256. So they, they have it and they use it themselves in their big mining warehouses. And they suck up a shit ton of juice and electricity and obviously you need cooling as well because they heat up. Well, guess what? China, they're gonna, they have subsidized electricity. Uh, therefore, they have you know, free electricity or close to free electricity and air conditioning. So it's very difficult for you to compete with warehouses full of these like specific SHA-256 cards. And this is why proof of stake is very interesting because it eliminates all those cards, at least on Ethereum, and it puts virtual mining where, oh, you want to be part of the network? Well, put some skin in the game, put your actual Ethereum online, and you can now become a virtual miner. And if you ever lie or if you want to do an attack on the network, well, the currency that you put up, the Ethereum you put up, it's gone. Okay, I got a question here from a guy which I don't understand. I'm, sh I'm sure it'll make sense to you. He says, could you elaborate on the upcoming EOS ICO providing 50, it says 50 point triple zero transactions a second with no fee. Will upcoming crypto like these destroy Bitcoin in the long term? Well, EOS is considered the theorem killer. So they're not going after Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a store of value. It's gold at the moment. Um, the whole free transfers, like no, no the transaction costs, I don't buy it yet. If we look at game theory, if you look at just on the, sh the network, the stability of the network, I don't know. Um, I have to see it first. I have to see it executed. So what I think their ICO, I think they're going to crush their ICO. I actually think they're going to probably raise like at least $300 million on their initial coin offering. Um, and so Steam, it, one of the co-founders is the original co-founder of, sorry, EOS, one of the co-founders, the original co-founders of Steam it as well. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'm interested to see how they pull it off. I think the more competition and the more startups we have in the space is the better. And it just goes back to game theory and it goes back to competition, where if uh, more people enter the space and challenge each other, therefore that's really healthy for the whole ecosystem. Got it. Okay, so I got a question here from uh, Mohit Chowdhury, and by the way, he's a subscriber on your channel, guys. If you want to learn more about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, all that Amir puts out now is just content on this sort of stuff. Just it's like many times a week he's putting out videos, but uh, check out his channel. It's just Amir Rosick. But he asks, uh, when will Ethereum take over Bitcoin, in your opinion? I don't know. If it does even, I have no idea, to tell you the truth. The flipping, as they call it, um, I don't know. I think that people need to stop comparing the two and stop focusing on the price and start figuring out um, why are you in the space in the first place? Because the issue right now, a lot, of, a lot of people in the space just for phenomics, and all they care about is the actual price of a coin. They don't really care about the technology, nor do they even investigate how the technology works. They're just buying for the sake of buying because somebody told them to buy it, which is kind of funny. Um, Ethereum is ever over overtake Bitcoin in that flipping? It, can it happen? Sure it can. Um, you know, I really don't know. It's very difficult to state. Um, got a guy that asks, he goes, is it worth investing in um, a, Bitcoin, a, a cryptocurrency type of startup? Like, are these... Are these um, companies that you can find publicly traded on the stock market somewhere? No, 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 no. That that that's why an ICO is. It's you know um, initial coin offering. 
lot of them have to be careful and they go to Switzerland or they go to Hong Kong or they go to Singapore so they don't get screwed over by the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. Um, so basically, for example, yesterday we had the company, no, sorry, two days ago, no, yeah, it was two days ago. Two days ago we had the ICO of status. Uh, .im and they raise over 200 million dollars equivalent in USD in Ethereum. They're based out of Switzerland, um, and but it's not. It's just a private company with a bunch of founders which say, "Hey, we're releasing our coin, this the status token. Sorry, not a coin, a token. Uh, and this is the price at the uh, at the sale price right now for this uh, launch. And if you give us one Ethereum, you get X amount of coins, and uh, that's how they have it. Um, so that's how an ICO works. So it it actually goes. For an IPO, it's actually now for the first time ever. Like, say you and I, uh, we want to create the Richard coin or whatever. Like, you know, a coin that somehow is connected to car sales, whatever it is. You and I can get a team together. We can go online. We can post an ICO and raise money all around the world. Are there any companies that are publicly traded that are working in the blockchain or cryptocurrency market right now that you can buy? Like, you know, we've got Tesla that makes cars and solar panels and all kinds of stuff like that. Is there a company no, that that's defeats a whole? That defeats the whole purpose of what a cryptocurrency is. Okay, so like these are literally wallets, secondary. These example. are brand new secondary markets. So, like a wallet, for example, or the social network STEM or Steam, whatever it's called. Like, there's nothing that's being publicly traded yeah. that somebody could invest in the actual infrastructure rather than the currency. No, are okay. you like Naval? Like, I, I recommend everyone also follow Naval on Twitter. So he is the founder of Angelist. He was also uh, the guest. With uh, Nick Zabos on Tim Ferriss, one of the godfathers of angel investing. He's invested in Pinterest, he's invested in you name it, like Silicon Valley Giant. He also states, like, these are new marketplaces, like brand new, like no correlation, not connected to stock markets, complete secondary markets that people have liquidity, that people have control over. Okay. I've got a question. He goes, Where to start with crypto? He goes, I need a more basic bitch approach to it. Go to BlockGeek slash guides. Read all the 12 guides. They'll be a pro. Okay. So download the guides. Check those out. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Unless you guys have any other questions, hammer them in real quick there, and I'll ask them. Uh, if not, let me just scroll back up here for a sec, see if I missed anything. Is there anything else that uh, people should know about uh, blockchain cryptocurrency? We're only at the beginning. Um, don't be afraid of change because in the next couple of years, the whole world is going to be disrupted with the self-driving cars, which are around the corner. Uber made a statement and based on their fiscal policy and their fiduciary responsibility, especially if they want to IPO, which they might considering Travis left. And I think that's one of the reasons why they haven't IPO'd. They're very bullish in the doubling down on full automated cars. Uh, you're looking at automation globally. Crypto goes very hand in hand. So if you want to be, if you want to survive the technology, uh, apocalypse that's coming in a beneficial way wake up and start adopting play around with the technology like the funny thing when I hear people who say oh yeah that Bitcoin thing they just talk about it fuck talking about it get an get a wallet um, buy it buy some coin and have it on and experiment have some fun actually dive in and get sticky with your hands and that's stay relevant because these technologies are gonna transform the world in the next couple of years so Sum up your prediction. Like, let's say it's uh, 2020. Like, what do you think is going to yeah. happen by uh, 2020? If you wanted to throw out a prediction, you know, we'll you know we'll grab lunch and we'll chat about this in a few years. Bitcoin will be north of 10,000. You would have about three major blockchain players, no different than like Apple and like Google and Microsoft. Uh, it'll be the long tail. So. Pareto's principle, Fibonacci sequence, applies in nature, applies in this as well. Uh, so you have the 80-20 Fibonacci sequence where you have 20% of the companies dominating the whole space. So maybe maybe that's three to five top blockchain that everybody uses. Then you have the long tail where it's going to have like thousands of different tokens and coins that people all around the world use. Uh, you'll see more accessibility towards tokens and cryptos with decentralized exchanges. So people who can, uh, from a period pure aspect from phone to phone or, or computer to computer uh, and then most likely within the next within the next three years we'll obviously see some interesting say faulty code <laughs> or some hacks happening for sure 
Got it. Okay, so I'm going to throw my prediction because I'm seeing a couple of dicks on here leaving their ridiculous comments like, you know, this is a delusional sort of concept. Um, I think it's proven that well, it's, it's not. It's been, it's, been eight, it's been eight years so far, yeah. coming up nine yeah. for Bitcoin. I mean, if anybody's a skeptic, it's definitely me. I'm not, I'm not bullish on it. So I'm going to predict that there's going to be a significant hack that's going to completely devalue this currency because it, it's, it's bound to happen. Like, that's just my approach to it. It's not to say that I'm not going to buy any of this sort of currency. Um, you know, you don't want to throw all your eggs in one basket or even a couple eggs in one basket, right. but, you know, diversify, hold some stocks, hold some mutual funds, hold some gold, whatever it is that you want to, um, don't throw all your eggs in one basket. But I think that the real future is on the blockchain personally, um, on platforms like smart contracts, because that's going to let the banking system, the government get involved in, um, executing the transfer of funds back and forth, which is where I think the big opportunity is. But um yeah we'll see man you know we'll give it it's it's you know it's about three years down the road we'll see what happens in about three years time but um it's not going anywhere real fast i mean it's it's got I mean, it's a lot of momentum also this is going to be one of the biggest transfers of wealth in history of mankind i agree it's real really true right now. oh i know i know people and i know you know i literally know people in india who are becoming millionaires who are under 20 years old because they understand the space well, there's 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 people that have become multimillionaires in the last couple of years that on on cryptocurrency, absolutely for certain, especially the early miners. But um, yeah, so let's see what happens in a few years, man. I really appreciate you taking some time. So find Amir on YouTube. Hey, my pleasure. Amir Rostick on YouTube. Uh, Block Geeks is a website that he created, just BlockGeeks.com. He said there's some guides on there which you can download, which I'm going to grab and read for myself because I'm still a bit of a pleb in this area. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the live broadcast. Thank you for your questions. Um, if there's anything like this you want to see in the future on, you know, some concepts we'll learn about something or becoming better somewhere, shoot me a private message on uh, Facebook or just email me at Entrepreneurs and Cars. Thanks a lot, brother. Peace. Peace.